Welcome again. Right now we're at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 12 to 15 in our studies. We're going through the scripture, every word, and we are talking about it. We are digging in deep. This session is a very, very important session. We're going to be talking about Satan. We're going to be doing a quick study on Satan. Let's start by reading this portion. Paul writes, But what I do, that I will do that I may cut off occasion from those who desire an occasion. We just came from the previous session, just several verses before this, where Paul is talking to the believers in Corinth and he's worried that they might be deceived by Satan, just as Satan deceived Eve. So in that thread of thought, he comes here and he talks a little bit more about the character of Satan. Paul writes, But what I do, that I will do that I may cut off occasion from those who desire an occasion, that in which they boast, they may be found even as we. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as Christ's apostles. And wow, do we ever have a lot of people today who masquerade as Christ's apostles. I remember years ago going into a major city and going into the area that was a very, very, well, it wasn't a very good area, put it that way. And one person pointed out to me this one guy and they said, well, this guy is a pimp. Go and talk to him about Jesus. So I went over to him. And I had a track, you know, I didn't really know much about how to uh, open or how to preach the gospel in those days. So I just did whatever I knew how to. I had a track in my hand, a gospel track, and I handed it to him. And I said, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. I said, do you know Jesus? And he said, oh yeah, man, I know Jesus, man. Jesus is my best friend, man. I talk to him every day. I love Jesus, man. He said, I love Jesus, man. I love him. What do you say? to a guy who is doing evil, evil deeds, who says those kind of words. It's very hard to talk to somebody who believe they are right with Jesus when they are not. There are a lot of people who masquerade as Christ's apostles. Verse 14, and no wonder, for even Satan masquerades as an angel of light. It is no great thing, therefore, if his servants, if Satan's servants, also masquerade as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Paul doesn't emphasize grace or faith here. He wants you to examine their works. And it's very important here to draw the line, to connect the dots between Satan and his servants. As Satan, so will be his servants. Since we're on the topic and since Paul brought this up in this letter to the people in Corinth, let us delve a little bit into this topic. Who is Satan and what are his character traits? Satan is referred to in the scriptures by a number of different names, a number of different descriptions. Of course, Satan is one of them. Devil, enemy, adversary, accuser, old serpent, great dragon, Beelzebub, you know, Beelzebub, comes from the word Baal, Baal, Zebul, which means king or lord of the flies. Belial, which we get our word liar from. Liar comes from Lyle. Remember, Jesus said that Satan is the father of lies. Now, in a lot of modern day Christian minds, you know that Satan is the enemy of God and he's fighting against God and God is fighting against him. But really, Truthfully, that is far from the truth. God represents light. Satan represents darkness. You don't walk into a room, flip the switch, and all of a sudden there's a great battle between light and darkness. No, darkness gives way, no contest to the light. The scriptures declare that Satan has absolutely no power of his own except that which God gives him. Consider, for example, in the book of Job, God called Satan and said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, I can't do anything with him because you have protected him. And then there is Jesus dealing with the demons, the devils, the evil spirits. The evil spirits were absolutely terrified and petrified at the presence of Jesus. 
They couldn't do anything. They begged him, you know, send us into the pigs, you know, give us, give us permission to go to the pigs. And of course, Jesus, being the Jew that he is and knowing the scriptures that the pigs are unclean animals, knew that pigs are fair game. So he said, go into the pigs. So Satan, the devil, cannot do anything of his own accord unless he has the legal right to, unless God has given him permission to, or in many instances, such as here in Job, where God called Satan to go get Job, or in the instance of Saul, King Saul, where God sent an evil spirit to Saul. The darkness does not fight with the light, the light controls the darkness. You know, in the world of stage lighting and stage effects, you know, for concerts and other kind of theatrical, you know, events, those people, the people who operate the stage lights, the people who operate the special effects, the visual effects in a concert, it is my understanding that those involved in the stage lighting profession consider themselves to be controllers of darkness. How do they control the darkness? By light. God always has the upper hand. He always is on the throne. He is always making and executing judgments, okay? So Satan cannot go anywhere or do anything without God's permission. And for the most part, the reason why Satan has control over people's lives is because they disobey God. When they disobey God, they give legal ground for the devil for the evil spirits to operate in their life. So in order to be free from the evil influence of the devil and evil spirits, number one, the first step is they have to repent. That means change. They have to come to the place in their life where they change their life, where they stop breaking the law of God, when they stop breaking Torah. And when they do that, then they can go on the next step, and that is get the devil out of their life. As it stands today, in this day and in this age, Satan has a lot of sway over the West. And why does Satan have sway over the West? Why are, is there so many demonic and devilish things going on in the West today? Because of the lack of light, because of the lack of salt. We have traded our salt for sugar. We have traded the light for darkness. Satan operates by darkness. Satan's realm is darkness. God's realm is light. God's realm is light and knowledge. Satan's realm is darkness and ignorance. You know, a lot of people today, they love to hear fun facts, but they completely ignore and many times deny, plug up their ears and walk away from facts that are not so fun but just as factual and just as light bearing and illuminating as the fun facts are. People are hypocritically picking and choosing what they want to believe. So we have to stop thinking of this as like, well, Satan is God's opponent and God is fighting Satan. He, he's trying to overcome Satan. The opposite is the case, okay? Back in the Tanakh, the books of first and second Chronicles are considered to be a midrash or a like a, like a commentary of Kings and Samuel. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, it says explicitly that the Lord, that God himself, that the Lord incited David to take a census of Israel. We know that later on, David paid the price for doing that. But in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, the commentary, or the midrash, of 2 Samuel, it explains it a little bit further. It says that Satan incited David to take a census of Israel. So what happened here? You see, well, God is behind it. God sent Satan to entice David to take a census of Israel. So like I said, in 2 Samuel chapter 24, it says that God was behind it. First Chronicles makes it very clear that Satan is the one that was the actual instrument of God to cause David to do that. 
So we must ask the question, how do we know the true angel of light from Satan? How do we know the true gospel from the false gospel? How do we know a true apostle from a false apostle? The answer can be boiled down into a very simple answer. That is, anything that entices you to disobey the law of God is not from God. Anything that entices you to disobey God is not from God, okay? That is a real, real simple answer. Until next time, seek God with all your heart. And if you do, I guarantee you, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.